Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Unity of Command 2, a new turn-based World War II strategy game out by 2x2 Games, and the sequel of, I think it was 2012, the 2012 uh, classic Unity of Command. Both an approachable and, uh, and good intro to wargaming, while also being uh, pretty surprisingly challenging and including some tactical options that you wouldn't usually see in a game of this scale and scope. Uh, and so I think it's, it always makes for uh, an interesting uh, look. In today's episode, we're going to be playing the Advanced Antwerp, uh, which is going to be a different scenario than what we've been fighting lately. It's going to be a little bit more similar to uh, Dragoon, which we just successfully accomplished, although not, not with a ton of, uh, of points. Um, but the Normandy campaign, which we just concluded, was very much a slog of limited objectives, just trying to get through the enemy, just trying to push through a few more hexes. The advance on Antwerp is completely the opposite thing. Uh, it is a drive across largely open country, doing what you can to protect your flanks, while also trying to continue to press the bulk of the German forces up near the channel uh, and not giving them a chance to form uh, strong points. With that being said, uh, that's the battle we're going to fight, uh, and we're going to just jump right in. You can see here, after months of hard fighting, the Allies have finally broken out into the open. Having stood its ground until the breaking point, the German army has all but disintegrated. As such, supply is now the Allies' largest concern. The Belgian port of Antwerp is the largest port in Europe, and taking it will allow the Allies to freely oper operate their vast armies and air forces. So obviously we're trying to get to Antwerp, which is over here, but we're doing that by trucking in supplies from over here, all the way across uh, this entire length of France. Not exactly an easy feat, not an efficient feat, so that's going to be our objective. Yeah, who knows, P. Warner, it could have been anyone. Maybe it wasn't really the Germans. Advanced Antwerp. Scenario briefing. Schaaf dispatch. The German front line has collapsed and the enemy is in full flight. Wipe out as many of these depleted formations as you can while pushing hard and fast for Antwerp. Take as many channel ports as possible along the way, but do not let these minor prizes distract your attention from your primary objective, Antwerp and the German border. Reinforcements. The following units have been reconstituted by Schaaf after being destroyed in battle. The 2nd Canadian Infantry, Infantry Division, the 43rd British Infantry Division, the 53rd British Infantry Division, and the 2nd U.S. Armored Combat Command, or whatever that is. Okay. All right, so we've got a large German formation here, quite a bit of armor actually here uh, near Rouen uh, and just south of the Harve. This is the, str the strong point that they have, and the British and the Canadians are the ones that are really pressing against it. What we need to do with the Americans over here on the right flank is we need to pull as many troops as we can out toward Paris, and then we need to drive along this rail line to the east of Paris, all the way to the eastern part of the map, all the way over here, and we need to take Luxembourg, Liege, and Antwerp. These are the three cities we have to take to win this battle. So everything else is secondary. The problem to that is our supplies are limited. We're at 80% supply. We only have two supply trucks to expand our depots, and therefore supporting an offensive along the northern coast towards secondary objectives at La Havre, Boulogne, Boulogne uh, Calais, uh, are, are less important, but they also serve as vital rail depots. Places like Amiens serve as va va vital rail depots that have connecting rail lines that are going to be important to supporting our offensive. So we're going to have to see the best way to uh, kind of fight this battle, but I think it's really going to be to pull the bulk of the American armor east and then drive with all the American troops we can, establishing secure flanks along the way, while the British and the Canadians continue doing the bulk of the fighting and dying against the Germans along these riverways uh, and trying to destroy as much of the German formations as we can. With that being said, we do need to make sure that our troops are leveled up uh, to the max, so some of these units suffered casualties in previous battles. Those casualties fell back to rejoin the headquarters units, uh, and as a result, some of those units are at the headquarters right now, ready for redeployment uh, at the start of the battle. So we're gonna go ahead and assign those troops immediately uh, to the formations. So like when troops get dispersed or whatever, they leave the formation and they kind of sit on the map and they kind of walk around, if you will, <laughs> until they get back to a headquarter, at which point when they get back to a headquarter, they can be assigned to a unit or back to their original unit. And uh, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, they must have been back at the headquarters at the end of the last battle. So that's what I'm doing with all these units. I'm going to slowly go through them. It does take a little bit of time. I wish the game just automatically was like, hey, 
You've got these troops in reserve. We assume that you probably want them in the front line, so let's just give them to you in the front line right away. But it doesn't, and so I've got to manually go through and do that. It'd be great if there was a button just to be like, assign reserves to the front line, but there isn't. Um, the other weird thing is it's like not just pulling from a, a, a single pool, it's just pulling from that unit, which has its own pool, I guess. We also have 230 prestige. Wow. Four. We also have 230 prestige that we can spend some money on kind of getting some troops up to full strength or maybe overstrengthening them. So overstrengthening, that's not a word. Uh, but for example, this armored unit here, which has German armor all around it, we could spend some prestige to give them some Shermans um, in the unit. Um, and that g it makes them a little bit stronger and, and more ready to face off against the Germans in, in, in their front. Um, these guys back here, we can give some Churchills just to give them a little bit more, uh, more firepower. Uh, these guys, we're going to give a little bit of uh, artillery. So 105 millimeters and uh, um, yeah, because they're probably going to be bombarding. So I'm going to spend a little bit of prestige doing this. So we're going to do what we can here to bombard. These two units are probably going to bombard this armored unit and then hopefully the other guys will destroy it. These armored units probably need some quick firing artillery as well. So they get some 25 and 17 pounders also. You can see we're spending a big chunk of our prestige that we've built up. I'm hoping to get some of that back. Uh, Canadian armor step. Yeah, I'll spend 20 prestige to get that. I mean, the armor's where I want to get my where I want to get get strong. Some of this infantry probably could use a little bit more strength too. Okay, so those guys are built up. Yeah, this may come back to bite us in a future scenario, but I'm spending the vast majority of my money in this scenario right now at the start of the battle uh, with the interest of um, making sure that we win because I lost the last time around. Actually, it would be interesting if we could start off by building a pontoon bridge right here. It doesn't look like I have that capability. I would love to build a pontoon bridge across the enemy territory right away, but it doesn't look like I can. Um, okay, and then we have some other reserves which will come online later, but that's going to do it for the pre-battle phase, so we'll go ahead and jump right in. Hey, Kushin. Way not to have two drives going for the three main cities and the other going for our mains. Yeah, I did see J Street that the uh, that the flags were messed up. All right, so I think first things first. Oh, well, that armor can't do anything. So let's try immediately to get our drive going here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to just immediately start driving with our American tanks. Looks like they can get a two. Oh, my God, they just got shot up. They were supposed to go 0-2, but instead the Germans counterattacked and shot them up pretty good. So our infantry is just going to do what they can, I guess. Armor's going to follow them. This armor is going to pull back over here. I really don't want that armor on the front line. I'm worried they're going to get counterattacked. But... All right, so we're pulling our American armor east. American infantry probably will have to wait. We're not going to have sufficient infantry to support the attack, but I'm already starting out in a, in very much a market garden kind of a way. Long, strung out lines. Okay, so that's the start of that. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and get bombarding here to, to knock some of these uh, German troops. Whoa, we obliterated the city. Immediately the city's in ruins. Okay... All right, so our armor's gonna come up here in the rear of the enemy. Drive them out. These guys can then move in and take the city. These guys will come back and protect the bridges. I'm gonna keep my supplies and headquarters safe, so I'm shifting some troops around. But we drove back those ger that German armor.
So that was a good success for us. Let's go ahead and attack this infantry here to kind of... All right, so we completely destroyed that German infantry. That lets us bring up our own infantry here to secure the flank. This Canadian armor can kind of come across the way here, attack these Germans in the rear. All right, and then that Canadian unit there drove the Germans back. Infantry will attack here and finish overrunning those German troops. So we destroyed that German armored unit. We've more or less destroyed this infantry unit, although they're they're not totally destroyed in the sense that they can still move. They're they're stragglers, if you will. Um, move these tanks across the way. We'll attack this German armor here. They didn't destroy it, but they did at least suppress them and drive them back. So we'll move the infantry in here. Okay. So let's move these guys to the depot just to protect it. Actually, we'll move them one over here. So the depot's still guarded. And all will advance these infantry here. The airborne can attack these troops. They overran them. They also drove back this other German infantry unit. Or they didn't drive them back, but nearly. Actually, okay, so they can go and attack here finish those Germans off. Very good. Right, those guys are going to stay in place. So I think we really unbuckled the majority of the German position on the, on the left flank here. Pretty successfully. Our right flank we had a little bit less success. I'm actually going to use my tack air here. Just mainly to hopefully prevent these guys from launching any attack against us by suppressing them. We also do still have naval bombardment, which I should have used that I completely forgot about. That I think leaves the screen after this turn, but I don't have anything I can bombard. I guess I can recon maybe. Can we bombard a city if we... No. Only when you actually have eyes on a unit. Okay. That sucks. Alright. Uh, do we have any units ready? We do have two U.S. Infantry Divisions ready to deploy, so they can... Holy crap, they're under strength. We'll deploy those troops there. We'll bring these infantry up. They're going to help secure the flank as the other troops move forward. So the U.S. Infantry Division also just arrived. We'll move them over to attack and overrun the German troops that we already have surrounded, and we'll go ahead and move them back to the east. None of this, you know, the silly thing about this is like, our shore bombardment should be able to reach a hex or two inland. That feels like a weird arbitrary thing. It's like, yeah, it can reach like 20 miles inland, so. Um, I'm enjoying Unity of Command Cushion, to be honest. Quite a lot. I didn't play the first one. Uh, Major, what are you complaining about? Yes, it is a little bit beer and pretzel-y. But the element of logistics and the tactical options like uh, bombardments and set-piece attacks and other things like that uh, do actually help um, deliver a far more compelling experience, I think, than the game often gets credit for, just given its appearance. Okay, so actually our tanks there should all be along the railway, with maybe one exception. So they should be in supply, I think. Maybe not quite. In any event, this, uh, these infantry units here, we're going to advance them to take that supply. They'll get the rest of our troops into supply. Um, 
So our infantry there is going to move around a little bit to secure the rail line. You can see the supply line is now moving north there. The Germans did blow a bridge in our in our uh, in our path, so we'll go ahead instantly and we'll uh, we'll re redo that bridge. We'll rebuild that. We'll also reassign those armored steps that we lost. I'm going to go ahead and sweep our tanks out to the left, trying to expand our advance a little bit. And we'll destroy and overrun that German unit. That may have been foolish. We'll see. We'll move some infantry that way. I don't have any depots over there. That's. I'd like to move in to take a uh, uh, means, if that's how you pronounce it. But, um... Perhaps that's unwise. Problem is I'm waiting on this damn bridge. It is like Market Garden. Alright. Supplies there. All right, so it looks like we'll be in supply for most of these places. Let's go ahead and throw a depot down here on this um, advanced spot on this railhead. That'll give supply, or should give supply, to the tanks here on the left. They can swing back to the east over these bridges, or they can actually swing out around right to the to the bridges here. These American troops are going to move into Paris. These Germans are surrounded. It should be easy to overrun. So with this armor up behind, the Germans did launch a counterattack, which has thrown our entire left flank supply situation into more than a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and bomb this German er armor that's broken through. We did reduce them slightly. Move our armor back here that had broken out, and just like that, we've reduced the Germans. So that's good. Okay. I think we need more supply, to be honest. These guys have anything? Can they bombard these guys? Just turns the city into ruins, doesn't actually. Successfully bombard anything. We do have this naval bombardment, so we can go ahead and bombard these German tanks that are, all, are along the coast. And just like that, we do quite a bit of damage. We don't destroy them, but uh, we do destroy a lot of them. Let's actually do this. Can these guys move? No. These guys can. So these tanks can move over here and finish off this German armored unit. Okay. So these German troops who are surrounded. Alright, so actually we should launch. What we should do is we should launch a set piece attack against these guys. Because they, uh, they are dug in. Can't do that. I can't launch a feint. Which takes out some of their support. I'm still not really in much better shape there. So I'll have to leave that as is. Where's our, is our supply situation going to be better next turn? Almost. Hmm. They must have taken a depot. I guess I didn't really see which depot that was they took. Meanwhile, these Germans are surrounded. We'll go ahead and attack here. All right, so we overran them. Go ahead and take them as prisoners. So we've destroyed a good deal of German troops. Swing this advance out wide a little bit. Should still have supply over here. protect that roadway, even though that's going to be out of supply, actually. Any other bridges that need to be repaired? No. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so I want to get along that rail line there. That'll make sure we have supply for these troops up at the front. I don't want to actually attack. Let's do that to protect the, uh, the rail line a little bit. All right, so we're going to move these British troops up to the east here to support the drive originating out of Paris. So we've moved a couple of infantry units to the left to secure our flank. One of them is going to be out of supply. We've moved armor units up here toward Amin to threaten the German rear and their supply network while we're also repairing a bridge here in the center and driving toward Reims, toward Mons, and eventually toward Antwerp. We're two turns in. We have 13. We're bringing up three infantry units here also to protect our right flank. And we've uh, taken some of the rail lines and railheads to secure Paris. We'll probably bring these troops also further east. I'm going to also move our headquarters unit here into Paris, which is going to which is going to give us more support up toward the front lines. The British headquarters probably doesn't need to move yet. Tuck this guy in behind here. And I think that's probably going to do it. I'm curious if the Germans have troops in Mons, Brussels, Antwerp. So they actually have some infantry in Antwerp. But that's it. How do I... There. Meanwhile, new units... Are ready. So we've got... I think these are Polish armored. So I'm probably going to move these guys also, but not along the right flank. I want to move them to the east here to join the assault from Paris. Do we have anyone else? We have guards armored as well. British guards armored is arriving with limited troops, actually. Why do they arrive with one troop? Why do I have to... These guys are going to be out of supply. Great. Okay. Um, that's going to do it for turn number two, I think. Unless there's any... Is there anything we want to deploy here? We do have a regimental pair, or a pair drop unit here. It's always tempting to drop these guys, like, on a depot or something like that, out toward Lille. But I think we're going to hold on to our paratroopers for the moment. Until I see something a little more tempting. I could drop them on Amin's. I think. I'm not really sure. They might have troops in the city itself. So we'll hang on for a turn. We'll move forward. Alright, the Germans are counterattacking with armor on our flank again. Both flanks, actually. They're really driving their tanks pretty aggressively to kind of get in between us. And that's a smart thing, but it's also one of those things where it's like, dude, you're leaving yourself exposed. What about our recon? Oh, nope. They've got armor and troops, so they've kind of set up a new front here. Just from Rouen to Amiens. All along here, they've got three armored units and some infantry. Meanwhile, German mechanized troops are over here to the east. I probably want to use my air on them. All of these troops are without supply for a second straight turn. These German troops are slowly being whittled down, but probably not fast enough. My troops have been out of supply for two turns. We'll swing our armor in here behind these German tanks and destroy them. Okay, so they'll be in supply. I may need to build a new depot here to support these these guys. Could continue our advance to get across the river at La Havre. That would be the ideal thing, but I've got these German troops in my rear. 
but I can't reduce. I just can't beat these guys. That's a rear guard. Okay. None of these troops can attack effectively. I really like the idea of getting across the river without the bridge being blown. Because it will be blown. Alright, these guys. Hmm. Let's swing in behind here. We'll drive along the rail line. Hopefully it stays open. All right, let's use some air on this guy. So it loses two support. We'll go ahead and attack there. It says two to nothing. We do, st we do still lose some casualties. But we at least dro drove it east. Move these guys over here to protect that flank. These guys will move up. To keep the depot safe. Move some of these troops over to the left in case the Germans do try and launch a counterattack toward our left flank. We'll pull these guys back toward Paris, towards support. Also pull these guys back. That left flank's really not super important. Looks like that bridge is already destroyed. So we'll have to repair these two bridges to our front. We'll drive these tanks over here behind these mechanized troops. And now that these... Oh, will we even bypass? Wow. Let's do that. So these tanks will actually advance to the east. Why is it that my forecasts are never right? Anyway, we drove off the infantry there. We may take an armored counterattack in the flank. Um, I'm really driving on Antwerp on a shoestring. Let's go ahead and use our air against these guys who are dug in. That does nothing. Great. All right, so we, we overran the Germans here to the east of Le Havre. We drove across the bridge. We've seized the bridge. These guys. Shifting as much of my armor to the east, as much of my infantry to the east through the, the through the Paris pocket, if you will, as I can. Let's also we're gonna have to build. So what's our supply situation look like? This armor up here is gonna be out of supply. The troops on the left largely will be in supply. Pull them back one hex. So these guys will all be in supply. Out of supply. Wait, how are they out of supply? These bridges have been repaired. Maybe they're just not in supply yet? But the bridges should be intact now that we've repaired them. So maybe next turn they'll be back in supply. So the guys advancing on the railway will be in supply. I really need a depot back here. I just don't have enough. I, I don't have. Really, I don't have the resources to deploy depots in places like this. That's not going to really aid the uh, advance at all. But I, I can't afford to have units starving on the left flank either. So I guess what we do, this depot covers us for what? Yeah, they're not doing anything. This depot is doing nothing. I mean, it's supporting some of the troops near Paris, but there's probably a more efficient way to do that. These guys are on railways, so those guys don't matter. The only unit that's not is this infantry unit here. So I think what we'll do is we're actually going to disband this depot. And then we're gonna, so we'll get one of our trucks back next turn. Then we're going to go ahead and deploy a truck here. 
And that'll actually cover all the same troops anyway. It's just a better positioned truck. Assuming the Germans can't counterattack or somehow spring across the river, which I own this bridge. They could counterattack here, but they'd have to get through this infantry. So they don't have an avenue, shy of these guys breaking out, which I think is unlikely, to, uh, to get at us over there. All right, guys. Well, I haven't had to do this yet in this series. We've been running episodes a little bit longer, closer to around the one-hour mark. Uh, we're only about 30 minutes in here. But uh, this battle actually took a bit longer. It was closer to around an hour and 20 minutes. And so uh, because of that, I am going to go ahead and jump in here and cut this off. This is a pretty good stopping point. We're still in the early battle. We've driven east past Paris. The Germans have fallen back along our line of advance. They are threatening our flank. Uh, there's been a good deal of armored warfare all along the line. Um, and so some pretty good fighting. So I think this has been a pretty good uh, episode, uh, uh, well enough to kind of wrap things up here. And then we'll pick up the second part of the, the drive across uh, France, the drive on Antwerp, uh, in our next video. Until our next video, however, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.